Hello everyone, and a warm welcome to our channel. Today, we will unravel the top 7 fears that haunt narcissists. From the unsettling fear of disrespect to the gripping terror of being perceived as average, each fear plays a pivotal role in shaping their behavior and interactions. Gain insights on how to navigate these intricate dynamics and preserve your inner peace amidst their turbulence. Remember to subscribe to stay updated with more empowering and informative content. It may not come as a shock to many of you that when you interact with a narcissist, you're bound to experience a significant amount of negative emotion. This emotion, on the surface, often manifests itself as anger, at least initially. Narcissists are known to be easily perturbed, agitated, and irritable, sometimes escalating to bouts of rage where they may utter harsh and unfavorable comments about you. A covert narcissist, on the other hand, tends to express their anger in a more passive-aggressive manner. Instead of lashing out, they resort to withdrawal, punishing you with silence and manipulation. They may also exhibit non-cooperation behind the scenes. Nevertheless, if you've had numerous experiences with a narcissist, you've likely thought to yourself, I need to steer clear of that person's anger. However, it's crucial to understand that anger is often a secondary emotion reflecting a deeper issue within the person experiencing the emotion. In the case of narcissists, this underlying emotion is typically fear. It's quite simple to identify this when the narcissist's anger surfaces. Their anger is essentially their way of conveying, I feel threatened by who you are at this moment. Your thoughts, priorities, and the place I occupy in your life unsettle me. Instead of articulating these feelings, they lash out at you lacking a significant amount of introspection. Therefore, it's evident that their anger is merely a facade, masking a deeper sense of fear. It's worth noting that trust is the opposite of fear, specifically, trust in oneself, or what I refer to as self-trust. For instance, if someone disagrees with me or behaves in a manner that I find disagreeable, which in turn agitates me, my self-trust prompts me to pause and reflect. I can confidently say to myself, hold on, I know myself well enough to figure this out. Let's take a moment to calm down and understand the situation. What are you trying to communicate to me, or what would you like me to comprehend? This is the essence of self-trust. Unfortunately, narcissists are incapable of such self-awareness. Their fear is so overpowering that it compels them to lash out at the other person, instead of engaging in introspection and self-trust. Your primary task is to look beyond the facade that the narcissist presents and comprehend the fears that motivate their actions. By doing so, you can cultivate a sense of detachment, preventing their negativity from affecting you personally. This is crucial, as narcissists often want you to shoulder the responsibility for their emotional well-being, which is an unhealthy and inappropriate expectation. I've identified seven core fears that narcissists tend to harbor. As we delve into these, Consider if you can relate to them and perhaps reflect on whether these fears resonate with your own experiences or those of individuals in your life. Firstly, and this may seem rather obvious, narcissists harbor a deep fear of being disrespected. If you diverge from their perspective, or if you have plans or ideas that they cannot comprehend or wouldn't have thought of themselves, they perceive this as a form of disrespect. Rather than accepting that you have a different viewpoint, the narcissist assumes you're disrespecting them. This stems from their belief that respect equates to complete agreement with their thoughts and ideas. They are at a loss when this kind of absolute agreement is absent. In essence, what the narcissist is crying out for is validation. They crave the assurance that you perceive them as significant. They demand to be treated with a high degree of reverence, and anything less than that is seen as disrespect. However, it's noteworthy to mention that while they expect this level of respect from you, they often fail to reciprocate it. This discrepancy in their behavior can be described as hypocrisy, but it's simply the way they operate, driven by their fear of disrespect. Building on that, we can identify a second fear that plagues narcissists, the fear of abandonment and rejection. Not only do they dread being disrespected, but they also perceive your disagreements or criticisms as forms of abandonment. It's as if your disagreements communicate to the narcissist, I dismiss you. You're insignificant to me. I don't value you. Although you may not utter these exact words, this is the interpretation that narcissists often arrive at. 
narcissists struggle to cope with the idea of being considered insignificant or unimportant. What do you mean I'm a nobody, is a question they might ask themselves, grappling with the thought of not being valued or deemed important by others. Interestingly, one of the reasons narcissists continue to engage with you is because they view you as a source of supply. They need you to be present, to be subordinate to them, and to affirm their importance. Your subservience feeds their sense of self-worth and makes them feel significant. So, when you reach a point where you decide, I've had enough. I no longer wish to play this role. I'm no longer interested, narcissists are likely to respond with panic. They fear the loneliness and uncertainty that come with your absence. It's as if they're pleading, don't leave me alone. Come back and play your role. Their fear of abandonment and rejection is so intense that it often drives them to desperate measures to keep you in their lives. A third fear that narcissists grapple with is the fear of criticism. Think about it, have you ever encountered a narcissist who refrains from criticizing others? The answer is likely no. Narcissists are known for their propensity to criticize, yet they cannot tolerate criticism directed at them. They are quick to point out your flaws and dictate what you should or shouldn't do, but they balk at the idea of the same being done to them. This one-sided approach to criticism stems from the narcissist's need to maintain a sense of superiority. Their criticisms serve as a reminder that they consider themselves to be above you. Hence, when you return the favor and criticize them, it's as though you're challenging their superiority. The idea of accepting that they have flaws, just like everyone else, is unacceptable to them. Narcissists struggle with the notion that they are on the same level as the rest of you. They refuse to see themselves as ordinary humans with flaws and imperfections. Instead, they believe they're superior, almost superhuman. This skewed perception of self makes the prospect of criticism deeply unsettling for them. The idea that they could be flawed, just like everyone else, is something they dread and fear. This leads them to shield themselves from criticism, maintaining their illusion of superiority at all costs. Expanding on the previous point, a fourth fear that narcissists harbor is the fear of ridicule. It's one thing to feel criticized, but narcissists are particularly sensitive to any form of ridicule or mockery. If they feel that you're belittling them or treating them with contempt, that strikes a raw nerve. Whether it's through teasing, sarcastic remarks, name-calling, or any form of derision, they perceive such actions as deeply offensive. These behaviors trigger their anger, and their response is often fierce. They operate under the belief that no one, absolutely no one, can get away with ridiculing them. This reaction is rooted in their fear of being perceived negatively. Speaking from a personal standpoint, no one enjoys being ridiculed or spoken of poorly. However, it's essential to realize that when someone resorts to ridicule, it says more about them than it does about the person being ridiculed. It's crucial not to internalize these negative comments and allow them to shape our self-perception. Unfortunately, narcissists do not share this perspective. They readily internalize the ridicule and respond by ridiculing the other person in return. Often, their reaction is to humiliate the other person. They may resort to name-calling, using derogatory terms to belittle you and make you feel inferior, whether it's calling you a loser, a reject, or using ethnic slurs, their goal is to push you down to lift themselves up. This behavior is driven by their fear of being in a position of inferiority. They dread the thought of being seen in a negative light, and they will go to great lengths to avoid it. Moving forward, a fifth fear that narcissists battle with is the fear of being exposed. For most of us, when we interact with others in different contexts, be it work, business, family, or friendships, it's inevitable that our flaws and mistakes will surface over time. Our humanity, complete with its imperfections, becomes apparent. Healthy and secure individuals can admit their flaws and mistakes, acknowledging them as part of their journey. They're open to discussing these shortcomings and learning from them, aiming to support each other in the process. However, narcissists view this scenario quite differently. They fear exposure and dread the idea of their mistakes becoming public knowledge. No one is allowed to expose me. I don't want my mistakes to be the topic of conversation, is their line of thought. So, what happens when they're caught lying, behaving inappropriately, or making miscalculations? 
they resort to deflection. Firstly, they attempt to diminish you, painting you as the loser. Then, they portray themselves as the victim. If you notice my flaws and hold them against me, then the problem lies with you. I can't believe you would speak ill of me, is their typical response. They rationalize their behavior and flip the narrative, making you out to be the one with ill intentions. This is a defense mechanism they use to protect themselves from the fear of exposure, maintaining their self-perceived image of perfection. A sixth fear that narcissists contend with is the fear of being irrelevant. The worst possible scenario for a narcissist is to be ignored or overlooked. There could be instances when a narcissist is in a group setting, and they realize that the others don't seem to value their presence or input. They interpret this lack of attention as a referendum on their worth, which is deeply unsettling for them. Narcissists operate under the belief that they are extremely important and relevant. They feel that their presence and opinion should be acknowledged and valued by everyone around them. The idea of being overlooked or disregarded is deeply distressing to them. They crave the spotlight and dread the thought of being sidelined. Their need for relevance is so strong that even the slightest hint of being overlooked can trigger an intense reaction. They may become defensive or overly assertive in an attempt to regain the attention they feel they deserve. This need to constantly be in the limelight, to be relevant, is a driving force in their interactions and relationships. It also forms the basis of their fear of being irrelevant, a fear that can greatly impact their behavior and reactions. Lastly, a seventh fear that narcissists grapple with, which is somewhat a variation of the six, is the fear of being average. For instance, consider a situation where someone marries a narcissist and introduces them to their extended family or circle of friends. The narcissist may feel like they're just an attachment, an appendage, to this already established group. Instead of taking the time to gradually integrate into the group and form bonds over time, the narcissist resents the idea of being a wallflower. They dread the notion of being perceived as an ordinary person who just blends into the crowd. Being unknown or overlooked in any situation is deeply unsettling for them. They yearn to be celebrated and acknowledged. When someone else takes center stage or is praised for their accomplishments, the narcissist can't help but think, what about me? They fear being perceived as just another member of the group, rather than standing out as someone special. The prospect of being seen as average, as part of the middle of the pack, is a source of great anxiety for them. This fear drives their need to constantly be in the spotlight, to be recognized as superior, and to stand out from the crowd. Remember, when you encounter a narcissist who exhibits fear, it often manifests as anger. However, it's crucial to maintain your objectivity when dealing with such individuals. Here are some pointers to help you navigate your interactions with them. Firstly, it's essential to understand who you're dealing with. This is the crux of this discussion. An angry narcissist is often akin to a petulant child who yearns to feel special and significant. They are hypersensitive to any perceived slight or lack of special treatment. Recognizing this can help you approach interactions with them more objectively. Secondly, avoid getting trapped in their manipulative games. Narcissists often operate from a you owe me or here's what's wrong with you mindset. Instead of reacting defensively to their accusations or criticisms, which is what they want, remember that you cannot change them. Falling into defensive patterns only serves to feed their ego, as it allows them to maintain their illusion of superiority, if only momentarily. Another fundamental principle to keep in mind when dealing with narcissists is the importance of staying true to yourself and never apologizing for who you are. Narcissists, driven by their fears, often try to shift the blame onto you. In their minds, this absolves them of any responsibility. While it's crucial to acknowledge their perspective, it's equally important to hold on to your self-identity. You can extend an invitation to them, saying, if you'd like to know the real me and have a healthy relationship, I'm open to it. But if you're not interested, that doesn't mean I have to apologize for being myself. Lastly, if you find yourself dealing with a narcissist who is profoundly ruled by their fears, it might be necessary to distance yourself. Sometimes, this means physically removing yourself from their presence. However, if circumstances don't allow for that, you can still create psychological distance. Engage more with people who truly know and appreciate you for who you are. 
it's vital not to let the narcissist's fears trigger your own. Maintain your inner peace, even when faced with someone who is not peaceful. I hope you find value in insights like these. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your journey. If you find these discussions helpful, I encourage you to subscribe to receive updates on future videos. Your journey is important to me, and I look forward to continuing to provide support and insight in our future interactions.